Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm taking you on a tour. So recently I reorganized my bookshelves because I hadn't organized them at all since I moved into this house 10 months ago. When we moved in, I was seven months pregnant, so I just found boxes of books and unpacked them randomly onto shelves. It had been driving me absolutely insane ever since. I decided to tackle it this weekend, reorganize my shelves, get them the way that I wanted, and now that I have, I want to show them to you guys. But the first thing that you need to know is that I don't keep books unless I really like them, which means they're my all-time favorites in one way or another, or it's a book that I do intend to reread, or it's one of my favorite authors, for example, even if I don't care much for the book. That means that all of the books that you're about to see are unread. So this is a TBR tour as much as anything else because the majority of books in my home are TBR books. I guess the only reason that I can come up with to explain why that is, is I'm not an overly sentimental person. I'm more of an anticipation kind of person. I don't like to revisit things that I've already done. That is true in many aspects of my life. I like the excitement of experiencing something new. And so I find it more valuable to me to keep mainly books that I've never read. Additionally, I am a mood reader to the extreme. And I can't fathom how anybody who, I like, if you're one of those people who only keeps maybe four or five books on hand that you've never read before, I would go crazy because inevitably I wouldn't want to read any of those books. I need to be able to go to my shelf on a whim and pick up something that sounds good in the moment. And luckily, <laughs> I have hundreds of books to choose from. So, without further ado, let me take you on a little TBR tour. Okay, so we're just going to start in my bedroom. This is where the majority of my TBR books live. Uh, this middle shelf right here, this is one of my favorite things that I own. This is an expandable bookshelf, so you can make it, you know, as long or as narrow as you want. As it is, I think I have it spread out as far as it can possibly go at this point. So, yeah. Uh, this house is mostly mystery, thriller, and horror books. So what I've tried to do is first prioritize format. These are all, for the most part, paperback books. My hardcovers are in my office. And after format, I prioritized genre. So I tried to keep my thrillers together, my horrors, etc. And then after that, I tried to prioritize author. So, for example, here we have my three Chevy Stevens books. We have my growing collection of Pierre Lemaitre books, which is something that's only recently happened. I haven't read any of his work yet. I'm hoping that it's good because I'm suddenly collecting it. Um, other authors, Heather Gunkoff, Mary Kubica, David Bell, um, Eric Rickstad, Kate Moretti, T.R. Reagan. These are my J.T. Ellison. So J.T. Ellison starts here and then I have three additional. So I have six books by her altogether. I haven't read her work yet either. So that's great. <laughs> and then... Here is this M.J. Arledge, um, Helen Grace series. So I originally found Eeny Meeny, and I thought it sounded like a good book, and then I realized it was a series. After that, I believe I found Hide and Seek, which isn't book number two. So I figured I might as well collect them all. There are currently eight in the series. I think I have seven. So there's still one out there that I need to pick up. Um, let's see, Blake Crouch, 
a couple by Megan Miranda. This is the only paperback Fiona Barton that I have, so it's sitting here by itself, but I also have one in my Book of the Month collection. And what else of note on this particular shelf? After I ran out of authors that I have multiple books from, I just sort of prioritized stacking them by size. And I should say that I absolutely hate uh, organizing my books this way or shelving my books this way because, you know, if I want to read this book, for example, then I have a really hard time, you know, getting it out without causing chaos on its entire shelf. But it is what it is. So from the left side of this shelf to the center, we have mystery, thriller type of books. Then on the, if you see books like this sticking out, it's because they're newer and I still have to include them in my next haul. So that's why that's like that. Then on this side here uh, is horror, or at least some darker fiction that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to someone who maybe isn't comfortable with that kind of stuff. But here's the three Andrew Piper books that I own. Um, Clive Barker, Books of Blood. That's pretty popular if you're a horror fan. <sighs> the Hunger, you've seen that recently. The three books I own from Paul Cleave. Some Jonathan Mayberry that I've managed to collect. And so on. And then more towards the bottom, the thrill mystery thriller kind of spilled over. And then down here at the very bottom, which let's see... These are kind of a mismatch of, like, different kinds of books. There's some literary fiction down there. I ended up with some Lisa Jewell down there. Kristen, there's a Kristen Hanna book down there that's historical fiction. I very rarely read historical fiction, so... And then up top, of course, Anya Alborn. And the rest of the series by Dan Wells, the I Am Not a Serial Killer. I'm looking forward to finishing that series, but I mean, yeah, come on. <laughs> so here's kind of a head to toe look at that bookshelf. Then I have this little teeny tiny bookshelf over here. I say teeny tiny, but I'm sure it has quite a few books on it. Up here on top, these are my celebrity written books. I have a couple by Kevin Smith, if you can't tell. I really like funny people. Uh, Amy Schumer, Eddie Izzard, Amy Poehler. Then I have three books written by Corey Taylor. He's the lead singer of Slipknot and Stone Sour. And then the, bo the bookshelf begins with the books, the YA books that I own, which by no means is an extraordinary number. That's why I have the Hunger Games series up here. The Red Rising series. I only have two books from that. I have The Wrath and the Dawn, The Rose and the Dagger. I have these books by Danielle Page. This whole series about Oz, Dorothy and Oz. And they all have really cool um, naked book covers. So there's that. Then the Six of Crows duology and Nevernight. I understand that that's not technically a YA book, but come on, it's Jay Kristoff. Illuminate Gemini, Obsidio. And then just some contemporaries here. And then a couple additional fantasies. After that, here in this small section, I've somehow managed to start collecting a moderate amount of Christian fiction. These are all like Christian suspense. These are they're the Tosca Lee is a kind of, of fantasy really, but the rest of them are more Christian suspense. And I mean that began with Ted Ducker and Frank Peretti, who have really interesting thriller suspense mystery sounding synopses or concepts. And, you know, it was never my intention to specifically start accumulating Christian fiction. And then below that, on the last two shelves, are just some romance, romantic suspense that I have in print. Typically, though, the majority of romance novels that I read are done 
in ebook or audiobook. So this is a pretty pathetic looking romance collection. And then just hiding out over here are another, it's another little pile of odds and ends like my Edgar Allan Poe works, uh, Catch-22, The Revenant, The Book Thief, The Handmaid's Tale, and then of course on the very bottom <clears throat> is my small Chuck Palahniuk collection. So those are the paperbacks that I own, my TBR paperbacks. Now we'll go into my office and I'll show you my hardcovers. Okay, so this is the shelf that sits behind me when I'm filming YouTube videos, so it should look familiar to everybody. The Book of the Month books that I have, the unread Book of the Month books that I have, are just up here on the top with bookends because I'm rapidly running out of space. So let's see. I had started The Silent Patient, but haven't finished it yet. Not because I'm not interested, just because something else has come up. Um, same with Our Kind of Cruelty. I had started that as well, and yet it still remains unread. The rest of these hardcovers are sort of organized by interest, basically. I've prioritized the ones that I want to read the most. Some of them I've had for a really long while. Um, this one, obviously The Sky Fell on Splendor is new. <clears throat> Force of Nature and The Dry. The Dry is a lot older. House in the Sky is older. I've had that one since I took my book to break. Disappearance at Devil's Rock. Paul Tremblay, of course. I want to read that one. Kate Hollihan. I was so impressed with the lies she told that I ran out and bought The Widower's Wife. Haven't read it yet. <laughs> These three will be included in a haul that you guys have probably already seen. Same thing with Righteous. All is Not Forgotten. This one got bumped up recently when I read another Wendy Walker book that I was really impressed with. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. The Current was an anticipated read. Uh, the Dreamers, The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And then I have three Peter Swanson books that got bumped up when I read The Kind Worth Killing and really loved it. I have All the Beautiful Lies, The Girl with a Clock for a Heart, and Her Every Fear. The, the, whoops, the next CJ Tudor book, which I am looking forward to as well. And a little book called Snap by Belinda Bauer. On this shelf, Unsub, that was a really popular book, Jose Saramago's Blindness. I still really want to read that. Um, John Katzenbach. I have this book called The Madman's Tale. John Katzenbach was one of the options this month for my Pick My Book. His other book is called What Comes Next. The Three and Day Four by Sarah Lotz. The Three appeared in one of my Pick My Book videos before I, I took a book to break, and I still haven't read it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Christopher Moore probably seems a little bit out of place on my bookshelves, but I have a few books from him. I really like Lamb. Um, the Ruins, I am looking forward to reading that. And then the next shelf, these poor books probably won't be read for a while. I'm interested in them, but I'm not dying to read them. So if you see something on this shelf that you really think I need to read, let me know. But for now, these are pretty low priority books at this point. And then on the very bottom, these don't really have anything to do with priority. I have the couple of books that I have from Stephen King, Joe Hill, Karen Slaughter. I have to look into these Karen Slaughter books because I know now that they may fall into a series somewhere. And then I have some more nonfiction memoirs, um, a couple of books for work like Measure What Matters and Strength Finder. Those are just kind of hanging out there because why not? And then three other random little 
hardcovers that didn't fit on this shelf. So over here on this floating bookshelf briefly are books that I have prioritized above all others. So The Woman Inside, that was an anticipated release from 2019 and I started reading it but had other obligations so it's still sitting here waiting to be read. Kristen Ashley, my favorite romance author. Closer Than You Think um, by Lee McGuire. Somebody sent this book to me and asked me if I could please read it and do a video for it. I said sure but it's still sitting there. <sighs> Forbidden, which is a pretty um, popular or notorious romance novel, Waking Gods, the second book in The Themis Files, The Hunting Party, Lucy Foley, which you all seem to be very interested in, and then The Test by Sylvain Nouvel. This is just a really short book that I think packs a punch considering its size. So those are the books that, you know, when I don't have something that I absolutely have to read, those are the ones that I'm going to be diving into. Just for reference, in case you guys are wondering, like I said, I don't keep many books, only the ones that I absolutely love. So the hardcovers that I've read and are keeping for now, uh, The Hunger, Ready Player One, Final Girls, The Cabin at the End of the World, Cry No More, A Million Junes, Pretty Girls, The Marsh King's Daughter, Inspection, and My Lovely Wife. So Cry No More has been, whoops, Castiel just took a nosedive. Uh, Cry No More has been one of my favorite books for a really long time. This book will probably stand the test of time just for sentimental value at this point. Um, book of the Month Club books, with the exception of Hunger and Ready Player One, so like Final Girls, they may not be my favorite of all time, but... I don't know. There's something about Book of the Month Club books. If I even like them a little bit, I'm a little hesitant to let them go. I kind of hang on to them. So I don't know. I like all four of the Book of the Month books on here, but you probably won't hear me referencing the final girls as one of my like all time favorite thrillers. Then up here, I just have a little floating bookshelf with some of my favorite books on it. So the Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson, The Kiss Quotient, Sleeping Giants, Watch Me by Jody German, which I recently purchased because I read the arc back in 20... back in 2018, I think. And I really liked it but didn't have a physical copy, so I found it on the on Book Outlet. The One by John Mars, which up until very recently was my favorite thriller of all time, and then the... Why can I never remember her name? But the Girl in 6E trilogy... What's her name? I don't know. The trilogy is referenced with the main character's name, but now I don't remember what it is. So those are some of my favorites. And then over here on this other floating bookshelf, Lamb by Christopher Moore, The Martian by Andy Weir, Brother by Anya Alborn, I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dean Wells, I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Anne Reed. Verity by Colleen Hoover, The Punch Escrow by Tal Klein, and of course The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton because there's nostalgia. And if you'd like a little extra treat, this is officially my only quote-unquote book collection. The, these are all my Kristen Ashley books on this shelf right here, like the Rock Chick series. I uh, can't even remember what this series is called. It's her Paranormal series though. Her paranormal romance series. Gosh. Uh, the Colorado Mountain series. The Dream Man series. The Unfinished Heroes. Duplicate copies of the Colorado Mountain series, or at least the first three books in the Colorado Mountain series, are these format, which I actually like better. Uh, the two books from the three in the Honey series, and then those are definitely not completed. Chaos and the Berg series. I'm still working on those, but so I guess this shelf, those floating shelves, and 
these hardcovers are my only red books in my home. The rest are all TBRs. So, hope you enjoyed this little tour. So, there you have it. Those are the bookshelves in my house. And, as promised, mostly unread books. If you are interested in participating, I'm also running an Instagram contest around this video. Head on over to Instagram. You need to be a follower in order to win. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed my TBR tour. Hopefully you found a lot of books to place on your TBR. And if you saw anything that you think that I need to read right away, by all means, leave those opinions for me because I'm always looking for a good suggestion or two. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.